A very warm welcome to all the children watching this online session of class 7th English literature on the devices. Hope you are fine in your homes and taking all the necessary precautions for the current situation. So today we will begin the poem in the Bazaar of Hyderabad written by Sarojini Naidu. Now who will know? You can see the pictorial representation of the Bazaar of Hyderabad. You can see the people are gathering over there and there are various shops and it is pretty colorful. So let us know something about Sarojini Naidu. Sarojini Naidu was a major political figure in the Indian Freedom Movement. She was the president of Indian National Congress. She became the first woman governor of India and in the bazaars of Hyderabad, the Golden Threshold, the Bird of Time are some of her notable works. She is also known as the Nightingale of India and the term is given to her by Mahatma Gandhi. Let's see some of the vocabulary which will be used in the poem. Brocade. Brocade is decorative shuttle woven fabric, a kind of a fabric which is to be worn. Jade, a hard green jewel for making jewelry. So basically a green stone for making jewelry. Lentil, edible legume. Lentil is belong to the uh, lentil and pulses. So these are the family belong. Maiden. Maiden means a girl or a young woman who is not married. Peddlers, a person who peddles. So that means a person who peddles here and there to everywhere to sell something. A businessman, a salesperson. Girdles, girdles, belt tied around the waist area. Scabbard, covers for sword. Now you must have seen in various uh, uh, form of art that the person who are fighting, they keep sword in a certain case. So that case in which the sword is kept is known as scabbard. Citron. Citron is a fruit belonging to the family of orange, lemon, so citrus fruit. Anklet. Anklet is ankle bracelet, a jewellery worn around the ankles. Wristlet, a piece of jewellery worn around the wrist. So let's begin with the poem. What do you sell, O ye merchants? Richly your wares are displayed. Turbans of crimson and silver, tunics of purple brocade. Mirrors with paint. Panels of amber, daggers with handles of jade. The poem begins with the poet question the merchants about what they are selling. She sees that the goods are displayed nicely to attract the buyers. So here you see the poem begins and the, it is in the form of a question answer. Here the poet is asking to the merchants what they are selling and the merchants are replying that what they are selling and what is the speciality of that product. So here the merchants replied that they are selling crimson and silver color turbans. Crimson is a deep red color, silver color turbans, purple brocade tunics. Brocade tunics as we have discussed earlier, a fabric which is to be worn. Mirrors with amber frame and daggers with handle made of jade. So daggers is basically a knife and daggers is decorated with the jade stone. What do you weigh, O ye vendors? Saffron and lentil and rice. What do you grind, O ye maidens? Sandalwood, henna and spice. What do you call, O ye peddlers? Chessmen and ivory dice. So here the poet then visits the vendors, the maidens and the peddlers. She asks the vendors what they are weighing for sale. The vendors reply that they are weighing saffron, lentil and rice. So here the vendors are the food merchants who are weighing saffron, lentil and rice. The poet then asks the maiden, the unmarried girls, what they are grinding. Grinding is a process where we crush something with a tool to make it in a powder form. So the maiden girls are grinding. They reply that they are grinding sandalwood, henna and spices. And now the peddlers are asked what they are calling as their trade cry as means that means that what they are selling. So they say that they are selling chessmen and dice made from ivory. Now what is ivory? Ivory is a hard creamy white substance composing of the main part of the tusk of the elephant for the game of the chess. So do not be confused because of the chessmen is written here. Do not be confused with the chessmen that the person who is playing chess is considered as chessmen. Chessmen is basically the you can say uh, pieces of chess uh, where something like horse elephant and knight so these are the two uh, pieces of the chess so that that is known as the chessman not the person who is playing chess so the peddlers are selling chessmen which is made from the ivory what do you make o ye goldsmith wristlet and anklet and ring bells for the feet of blue pigeons frail as dragons flying 
girdles of golden gold for dancer scabbards of gold for the king the poet now goes up to the goldsmith goldsmith is a person who deals and makes gold goldsmith and asks them what they are making they are making wristlet anklet and ring to adorn us and bells to be tied to the feet of pigeon so they are making various kind of jewelry and they are also making a ring which is to be tied around the feet of a pigeon and the bells are as thin and lightweight as the wings of a dragon fly so the bells which is to be tied around the feet of the pigeon is very light as it also almost weigh like a weight of a dragon fly they are also making golden girdles for dancers and golden scabbards for keeping the king's sword the golden girdles girdle is basically a piece of uh, decorative belt which is to be worn around the waist area dancer wore that and the golden scabbards for the keeping the king's sword what do you cry o ye fruitmen citron pomegranate and plum what do you play o musician sitar sarangi and drum what do you chant o magicians spells for ailments to come the poet now asked the fruit sellers what fruits are they selling so they answer that they are selling the citron pomegranate and plum now the poet asked the musician what instrument they play they replied that they are playing on sitar sarangi and drum so they replied that they are playing sitar sarangi and drum to entertain the crowd after that the poet goes to musicians and ask them what they are chanting so musicians reply as they are chanting the spells to bring in aeons who would help him perform his magical tricks so here aeon is a divine power to the magician which helps them to perform the magical tricks what do you weave o ye flower girls with tassels of azure and red crowns for the brow of bride groom chaplets to garland his bed sheets of white blossoms new garner to perfume the sleep of the dead so here the poet asked the flower girls what they are weaving with the azure azure is a deep blue color and a red tassel tassel is sands of flowers here the flower girls are making garlands garland is wreath of flower worn around the head in hindi we say gajra for the bride and groom and they are decorating places for their marriage and they are also making sheets of flower which is newly white white flowers which will be used on the dead man's grave now you see a same thing is used in different situation here flowers which is considered to be uh, flowers are used in marriage which is considered to be a beginning of a new life and flowers also used on a dead person's grave which is mean that the journey of the person has ended so here we can see the same thing is used on two different occasions so that brings us to the end of the poem let's see the poem is what is the poem is about so the poem was the part of the swadeshi movement swadeshi means home grown during the indian freedom struggle the poet wanted to deliver the message that the traditional indian products made of pure materials were of very high quality so we did, did not need the foreign goods that were entering the indian market at the time so here the specialty the qualities of indian products has been described in the poem in a various poetic form so that our products are also special to cater the needs of everyone and we do not need to rely on the foreign products the poet provides a panoramic view of the colors sound smell and sights of indian bazaar she also used vibrant rhyme to describe the magnificence of the bazaar and also the products sold in the bazaar so here the poet described a panoramic view panoramic means a very wide view whole eye can capture at one time a wide view of the indian bazaar displaying its various sound various colors various smells of the indian bazaar in a rhyming manner so that brings us to the end of this lesson hope you enjoyed watching it until then stay healthy stay safe thank you